What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Unparalleled Universe for another action figure review. And today we're taking a look at the brand new Dynamic Action Heroes Dark Knight Movie Joker by Beast Kingdom. And before we get into this, huge thank you to Beast Kingdom for sending this out to me. I was a big fan of the bank robber Joker that they did, so I've been looking forward to this guy, and I'm excited to finally take a look at it. So let's go ahead and get into it, starting off with this awesome packaging. I really like the artwork that we have here. We have some green and some purple, then we have the red lips and then the eyes down here it says the joker dynamic action heroes beast kingdom all that good stuff on the side of the box we get a joker card and it says the dark knight the joker one ninth scale action figure and then we have some like plain card designs in the back there that all looks really good on the back of the box we get a look at the figure and then it tells us about some of the features and the accessories that he comes with and then there's a bunch of nonsense down here on this side we have the same artwork as the opposite side but it's in green instead of purple i think that's cool and then you are able to take the cover off just like this. And then we have some nice looking artwork right here. Again, it matches the same artwork that we saw on the side of the box. Ooh, and this is nice. It says the Dark Knight Trilogy. Cool. And then you could remove this. And then that's where you could see the figure along with all of his accessories. And he has a lot more accessories than I was expecting, so that is awesome. But anyways, enough about this fancy collector-friendly box. Let's go ahead and take a look at the figure. And so here we have Joker right out of the box. And my first impression of this figure is that it's really nice. Once again, Beast Kingdom did a great job. And I really like the jacket. The texture to it is very nice. And one thing that kind of caught me by surprise is that on the inside of the jacket, he has the little straps to hold the grenades. And one thing that I immediately wanted to check out was the head sculpt because that was actually one thing that I wasn't crazy about on the bank robber version. I didn't think it was bad, but I didn't love it all that much. Um, but I will say that the face sculpt on this one is better than the previous. So I do like the head sculpt. I like the paintwork on the head. And just the overall look of the figure is really, really nice. They did a lot of great stuff here. The jacket is removable and so is the the undershirt and also the vest has little magnets in it so you could open it up if you need to and then you could close it up with no problem at all and i love that they did that instead of giving them zippers because zippers would have been a mess and they probably would have broken eventually if you were trying to unzip this up and close it but with magnets you could open it and close it with no problem at all and that is awesome stuff and yeah just a good looking figure um, nothing that stands out that I was like, oh, what's this? Just everything looks good right out of the box. And taking a closer look at the details, starting off with the head sculpt, I think they did a pretty good job on this. At first, I was kind of like, it's definitely better than the last one, but I don't know if it's quite there. But the more time I spend with it, and, you know, like after taking pictures and just looking at it for a while, I think they nailed it, man. It does look like Heath Ledger's Joker, so they did a great job with the head sculpt. And then here's the previous bank robber Joker. As you can see, this one was it wasn't really doing it it looked okay but i mean i don't see heath ledger in there but this new one it, it's a huge improvement and you could definitely see the actor's likeness beneath that paint so they did a great job with it and i love how they did the eyes it has that shimmer just like jack sparrow had you could kind of see my lights reflecting in the eye there the paintwork is very well done i love the smile you could kind of see the scars in there too then we have this green hair that looks really good. But yeah, that face sculpt. Man, look at that. Yeah, they, they definitely nailed it. They did a great job on that face sculpt. Awesome stuff. And then moving down into the body here, we've got a lot of layers of clothing. He's got his jacket. He's got this overcoat. He's got this vest. And then he has a shirt under. And like I mentioned before, the vest does have magnets. So you could open this up and take a look at the shirt underneath. You could see that pattern on there. You could see the tie. So all that looks great. And then the vest looks really good too. And I just love how these magnets work. They're very strong, so they clamp together pretty securely. They're not gonna come apart unless you want them to. Then he has some pockets there. You can kind of see the magnets through it though. That does kind of suck, but still, it's not a huge deal at all. We have the overcoat that looks good. And then right in here, we have the little straps for his grenades. And the jacket looks really nice too. I love this purple. I got to get myself a jacket like this. <laughs> so it's really, really nice work on the jacket. The tailoring, the stitching, and the fit is all really good on this figure. And then we have a couple of buttons right here. And then he does have the chain hanging down, and this does look really good. As you can see, 
it is attached to the pants so you don't have to worry about it falling down and then the pants do have those purple stripes on them that all look really good and then you have his shoes and the shoes look good but I do have a problem on mine I have some paint chipping going on so that kind of sucks I'm gonna have to touch that up but aside from that no issues with the shoes and then <laughs> we do have the the socks under the pants and these are actually soft soft uh, good socks well they kind of feel like it I don't know what's going on there they're not plastic yeah I don't know yeah it looks like they're soft goods <laughs> so that's a cool little detail but yeah overall this is a great looking figure I think the head sculpt is amazing the suit is amazing and just everything about it looks really good so and I want to go ahead and show you how easy it is to remove the jacket so I went ahead and took his hands off and then the jacket just slides right off so there you go you have another like an entirely new look for Joker so I think that is great so let's go ahead and see what he looks like with his hands back on and this look here so I don't know I can't remember if he looked like that at all in the movie you know but still that works if that's something you want to do and then you can even take off this overcoat You want to reenact the uh, Joker in the interrogation room scenes. Ooh, and that comes off with no problem at all. Oh, that's dope. Let's go ahead and put these back on real quick as well. Yeah, so there you go. Ooh, that's really nice. And if you want to take off the vest, you can, but I'm not going to do that because I feel like that's probably just going too far with it. I can't remember. I don't think he ever took off his vest in the movie. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to get the interrogation scene going, there you go. And then I wonder, like, you might be able to get some better articulation if you t leave the, the overcoat off and just put the big jacket on. Let's see what's going on there, right? It's definitely easier to get the jacket on. It does look a little less, like, puffy. Yeah, that looks kind of good too, right? So that's an option. If, if you think that there's a little too much going on as far as the layers of clothing go, then you can remove the overcoat, if that is what that thing is called the long sleeve button up shirt I don't know and then you could just put this big jacket on and there you go that, that works and you get some uh, articulation that's a little easier to deal with I might end up leaving them like that just so I could grab them off the shelf and pose them around a little bit more but I do like having all the different layers of clothing so I don't know but again, options, so that's a that's a very good thing. And for accessories, we have a bunch of cool stuff, including multiple sets of hands. So first off, we have a set of open hands. Then we have a set of fists. We have a set of gun gripping hands that are kind of cool because they kind of have the pinky sticking out, but you could still use these hands to grip onto the guns, but they make it kind of interesting. It's like a weird way that Joker would hold the gun, you know, with his hands kind of loosely gripping onto it. So I do like that. And then we do have a set of gripping hands, and these can be used to hold on to the grenades that he comes with. And then we have one right gripping hand that is used to hold on to the pocket knife that he comes with. And then taking a close look at the weapon, starting off with this guy here, I think this looks good. We have some silver on the top and then black on the bottom half of it where the handle and the trigger are at. So that looks good. And it does have a removable magazine. And I do like this because it's super long and crazy looking. So that's a good looking gun. And then next up we have this little guy. And this is probably my favorite gun that he comes with. I'm not sure what it's called exactly, but it's a little revolver. It has a short barrel. Most of it is black and then the handle is brown. So I think that looks good. And then we have this like machine gun type of deal. And this looks really nice. The paintwork on here is very well done. And the magazine is also removable on this guy. Again, no bullet but that's still a cool feature. And another thing I like about this gun is that this piece hinges closed if you wanna have it closed. So it's compacted. 
And then now here we have his little blade or his little pocket knife thing. And this looks good too. And what I really like about this is that the blade goes down. And then it comes right back up with no problem. So he could, he could tell his stories about how he got his scars, you know. And then he does have this... What, what is this called? I know if I say a rocket launcher, someone will yell at me. If I say a missile launcher, I'm sure somebody will get mad. I think, is it an RPG uh, thing? I don't know. <laughs> let me know in the comments. Yell at me in the comments and let me know exactly what this is. But it does look really cool. I like the paint detail on it. The sculpting work is nice. It's hard for him to hold it though. I couldn't find like a good position for him to hold this thing in. But I still like the way it looks. The only way I could really get him to hold it is just kind of holding it with one hand, leaning up against his shoulder, you know, like he's about to use it. But I couldn't really get him into any good firing position with this. But I still like it. I think it's very well done. So that's definitely a cool accessory. And then next up we have his grenades. And I already have his grenades in his jacket here. And that's great. He does come with three different styles. He has one of these round grenades, one of these... And then three of these guys. And um, these just kind of go clipped in with the with the little, uh, what would you call this? Not the pin, but the handle piece, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, it fits right in there. And these grenades are a little big, so it doesn't look natural <laughs> when they're on there. I mean, I guess it does for a crazy person like this to have grenades sticking out of his jacket. That works, right? So yeah, that's a cool little feature that they added. The fact that you're able to have these hang in his jacket. I think that's really dope. So all the accessories are very cool. And then for the final accessory, they did give us one of the Beast Kingdom standard display bases. And this time around, they kind of dropped the ball because <laughs> they gave us one of the ones that look like they go with the egg attack figures. So it sits kind of low and it can't really grip him anywhere where it's supposed to. Like you'd probably want it to grip him around his waist, but right now it's around his thighs. And it's just kind of, I mean, I guess it'll hold them, but it's still kind of funny. Like Jack Sparrow came with the, the appropriate display stand, but Joker does not. So that's kind of weak, but still not a big deal. And now for some size comparisons, we have Joker alongside a couple of other Beast Kingdom dynamic action heroes figures that I like. On the left, we have Jack Sparrow, and on the right, we have Bank Robber Joker from Dark Knight. And since these figures are kind of a unique scale, I'm just going to show all kinds of different figures of different scales just to give you a good sense of the size of this Joker. But here we have him alongside the Thousand Toys Iron Giant and then the NECA movie Raphael. And next up we have him alongside the Soap Studios Dumbledore and the Hasbro Black Series Mandalorian. Next up we have him alongside the Mezco 112 Collective Orlock and the Mezco 112 Collective Michael Myers. And next up we have him alongside the NECA Trick or Treat Sam and the NECA Halloween 3 Season of the Witch Skeleton Trick or Treater Kid. I don't even know if that dude has a name. <laughs> if he does let me know in the comments. I've never seen that movie but that's an awesome figure and here he is next to Joker. <laughs> And then next we have him alongside the Soap Studios Dark Knight Trilogy Batman and the NECA DC vs. Dark Horse Comic Con exclusive Superman. And then here we have him alongside the NECA Golden Angel Predator and the NECA Creature from Shape of Water. And of course we have him alongside the Marvel Legends Pizza Spider-Man and Marvel Legends Bucky Cap. And then for the final size comparison we have Joker alongside the Diamond Select Iron Giant and the Hasbro Hyper Real Darth Vader. And like I said in my Jack Sparrow video these type of characters will probably all end up on the same shelf as just a random iconic movie character shelf. I think that would look really cool. And the articulation on Joker is pretty nice. He does have a lot of good stuff going on. He's a little restricted because of the clothing, so you're not going to be able to get him into like the most acrobatic poses ever. But any kind of pose that you'd want to get the Joker into, this figure is capable of. So let's go ahead and take a look. First off, the head does move side to side. And he does have movement at the lower neck and at the upper neck. So using both of those, you get a good tilt. He could look up to about right there. He could look down to right there. And then for the torso, we do have... A mid torso cut and a waist cut using both of those you could get them to tilt side to side which is really nice you could get them to lean back to about right there maybe even more if you want to keep pushing it so that's pretty pretty good and going forward he only crunches forward to about right there which isn't too bad at all I think most of that might be coming from the hips actually let's fix that so there we go he crunches forward to about right there 
And then he does twist a really good amount at the waist and at the mid torso. So using both of those, you could get some good stuff going. Some running poses or whatever. So I do like the torsos on these dynamic action heroes figures. So far, they've been pretty nice. And then for the arms, they are really restricted because of the jacket. But you are able to get them to go up a pretty decent amount. There we go. You could get his arm up to about right there. And maybe a little bit more. But then the jacket kind of gets a little crazy. And it kind of depends on how you have like the clothes lined up. I took off his jacket a minute ago. And when I put it back on, I don't know if the under coat sleeve was the right way so if you could get it all back to how it's supposed to be you could probably get a little bit more going forward but as it is I'm, I'm fine with that I don't need him to have his hands up in the air or anything like that and then he does have a butterfly joint at the shoulder you could bring his arms up to about right there which is pretty nice damn that's a good looking figure <laughs> I really like the way this guy looks. But uh, yeah, you could have his arms up to about right there. And then he does have upper bicep swivel. He's got double jointed elbows, which get a good bend. Let's see on the jacket here. So it's pretty good for the elbows. And then at the wrist, we have a little ball joint. So you get a hinge and then it could rotate around and you could also rotate at the hand itself. So pretty good articulation for the arms, even with the jacket on. For the legs, they only go out to the side to about right there. They could kick forward to about right there, which isn't too bad. You could bring them back. They could only go back to about right there, so not much at all. And then just like Jack Sparrow, he does not have the upper thigh swivel, but his hip joint has enough room in there for it to get to move around side to side a little bit. He does have double jointed knees, which get a really good bend. He's got a ball joint, so his foot can go forward to about right there. It could come up to right there. It could rotate. And then we also have ankle rockers, which is nice. And then we do have a toe hinge. So yeah, I think there's a lot of good stuff going on with the articulation. Even though he does have all this clothing on and it does get a little restricted as far as the arms go. I think you could still do a lot of really good posing with this figure. So, so at the end of the day, I like this figure a lot, and I think the Beast Kingdom did a great job with it, and it makes me so happy to finally have a good Dark Knight Heath Ledger Joker, because I've purchased a few in the past, but they've always kind of left me unsatisfied. I have the NECA one, and it's okay, but it's like, ah, uh, I wish there was a little bit more going on here. Same thing with the Mafex one. I did consider picking up the Figure Arts one, but then I thought, like, What's there that the Mafex one isn't already giving me? And then, you know, Mattel has a couple of trash versions of, of this character. So unless I wanted to jump up to, like, Hot Toys or something, there's not a whole lot of options for a good quality Heath Ledger figure. So I'm happy that Beast Kingdom decided to tackle this version of the character because they killed it. And I like everything about it. The head sculpt is very well done. The soft goods are... Well executed. I like the jacket, the overcoat. All of that looks really good. Doesn't look too baggy. It does restrict the articulation a little bit, but you could still do what you need to do with Joker. You could definitely get him in any type of pose that Joker would be in. So the articulation is good. And if you remove the jacket, you could get some more articulation. If you remove the overcoat, you could get more articulation. So there's things you could do to utilize the articulation. And you could tell that the body is very well articulated. So there's a lot of good stuff going on there, but the design of Joker kind of just hinders it. But, you know, it's one of those trade-off things. And in this case, it all worked out because it's an awesome figure. The accessories are good. He's got a bunch of hands and guns and all kinds of great stuff. So everything about this figure is awesome. The one problem I have with this figure is the fact that there's a little bit of paint chipping on the foot. That's it. That's my only complaint. Everything about this figure satisfies me and my need for a good movie Heath Ledger Joker. And it fills a void in my collection because I feel like no company has given us a Heath Ledger Joker this good. It's by far the best, unless you're talking Hot Toys. Again, Hot Toys is on a in a different league, out of my league, but for stuff that I'd consider getting, 
this guy is definitely the best. And I did get this as a review sample, so the big question is, would I buy this figure? And the answer is yes. These things cost about $100, so if I was in a, had the opportunity to buy this figure, at first I'd be like, dang, $100? That's kind of, you know, that's kind of pricey, but I'd pull the trigger and I'd open it up and I'd be completely satisfied. I think this thing is awesome and I'm so happy to have it. So shout out to Beast Kingdom for hooking it up. And if you want a good Joker figure, I suggest you check this one out. It's $100 on Big Bad Toy Store. It might be a little less other places. I'm not too sure. But um, yeah, this is an amazing figure and I'm just really happy about it. So I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe and all that good stuff. Also be sure to hit the bell notification so you know every time that I go live. Thank you very much. Peace. Peace.